Yo, what is going on guys? Flashverse here and welcome back to another video on Arrow Season 8 and this will sadly be my one of my last videos on Arrow and this will be my review for Arrow Season 8 Episode 9 otherwise entitled Green Arrow and the Canaries but before I do that, you guys don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel so you are aware of more Arrowverse content coming your way and also spoiler alert for those who haven't watched the episode because I will be covering some spoilers that you guys certainly wouldn't want to hear from me but for those who are staying, you are welcome to stay and here is my review for Arrow Season 8 Episode 9 so this episode kicks off with Laurel, Laurel riding a motorcycle and is heading to a nightclub I think it's Verdant, I could be wrong that's what that's what it looked like at least because it had the V on the club. In this nightclub, she's looking for a woman who goes by the name Bianca Bertinelli. And Laurel Laurel finds Bianca in this nightclub and she approaches her and tells her that she may be in danger and that she needs to go with Laurel. But Bianca thinks she's full of crap, which leads to her being abducted. We then have the we have the, we then have Laurel chase after these kidnappers, and then we get this nice view of futuristic Star City, and I'm just like, okay, we're in Star City 2040 now, and then we get the reveal that we are in Star City 2040, as it does show on the bottom right that we're in Star City 2040. Um, at this point, I was wondering how Laurel ended up here, but they do reveal it later on. We then see the Queen Mansion return which was a cool, which was very cool to see. But we see Mia Queen wake up and looks at like the news. And from this news, we, fi we find out that post-crisis, we find out like a po post-crisis change in which we find out that Oliver Queen's sacrifice didn't turn Star City into like a corrupt, bad place. And now it became, it's become the safest place in the country. But then we meet Mia's boyfriend, who is John Dickel Jr. And I'm just going to say this right now. They be they uh, at this point, I'm just like they these two better split up because these two have no chemistry whatsoever. But then we just had uh, JJ propose to Mia. And I'm just like Ugh, gross. And, uh, I said that because like I just don't see these two together, but. It was cool seeing like JJ being a, like a good guy in this new post-crisis reality of Star City. We then go back to Laurel and she's looking for Dinah Drake in some cafe. Now another post-crisis thing that happened is that we find out that Dinah's throat never got slit. And in fact she can sing and do a canary cry again, which was very cool. But speaking of Laurel, she's pretty much the main role in this episode as she's the one that comes up with like all the planning and like bringing the team back and stuff now if this is going to be like how it will be like how the spin-off will play i'm all for it because i really like laurel and she's definitely the best part of the spin-off by the looks of it so far so dinah and laurel meet up and we find out that someone called dinah drake and black canary no longer exists due to crisis but then how is it that dinah drake is alive like the person is alive i have no idea but we also find out that laurel in fact tracked dinah in 2040 by the help of sarah lance then we find out that dinah just woke up in the future due to something but laurel reveals to dinah why she's in 2040 and it's because like they have to save bianca bertinelli and it's due to oliver's sacrifice and it would have been for nothing that star city would have turned to crap if this girl died so dinah and laurel go off and find try to find mia queen we then go back to mia and this is just like oliver in like season one like she's famous and stuff she's a celebrity now which now we also see like different like people from the future we see the future characters basically like we see william we see zoe and like the others um, their future has changed, obviously, as we do see Zoe right in front of our screens in the episode as well. But when Laurel and Dinah encounter Mia, I was surprised that Mia didn't know who they were at all. But Mia, Dinah and Laurel talk to each other and Laurel tells Mia what happened to 
Bertinelli and that she could be in trouble. Now, Mia then says like, something like, Star City is the safest place. And she basically doesn't believe them. Laurel then takes the memory ring and makes Mia remember her pre-crisis memories without her consent. So then Mia learns how to fight again and remembers her like meeting her dad and like other previous events that we've seen with Mia before crisis. Mia is then in, like she's in shock due to, like she can like she cannot carry like everything that she just remembered all in one go like that and like her boyfriend is a serial killer which she remembers which was another cool thing like JJ tries to pick Mia up and then she just like stay away from me which I thought was cool. Laurel then unites the team together and they try to work together to find Bertinelli. But Mia claims she's rusty, so Laurel does like a quick reflex test on Mia, which I think was cool. Laurel then comes up with like a plan to go to the Bertinelli's house and see like how they feel about it. This is when we this is when we get like Mia talking to the Bertinelli family and talking about the concerns that they have about Bianca. While Laurel is like the overwatch of this team for now. And Dinah is just in the house doing stuff. Now just from that, I think that they worked pretty well. But you could tell that like everything was being so rushed. We then have the team go back to their base of operations. And they're now trying to track what this new family's next move is. As they think that they're the ones behind the kidnapping. So one thing I really liked is when Laurel said suit up, Mia was in denial in wearing the green arrow suit. As she she says like it belongs to her father, she cannot wear this, which I really like and they're playing tribute to Oliver. But then Mia and the Canaries track this car and they have a really good fight scene. However, I'm just gonna say this right now so I don't forget saying it like later on. The choice of music in this episode wasn't the best, especially in the fight scenes. But like in other parts, they were okay. But Laurel and Dinah working together was really badass. And we also had this like awesome moment where the two canaries do the canary cry, which is where we get the reveal that Dinah could do her canary cry again. But when it came to Mia, she was a bit rusty. And that is obviously just like her like, like not practicing in this new post-crisis reality so she's like trying she's like slowly processing everything but she does manage to knock the brute down afterwards but then when she searched the car she couldn't find anything besides some fluids but then we get this explosion happen and we see this mysterious death stroke and at this point i thought it would have been connor due to post-crisis so I would have I would have been like okay this is Connor like they would have done something different to change it and stuff but no I turned out to be wrong but due to pre-crisis Dinah and Laurel are suspecting that this death stroke is JJ and sh- and JJ is the one behind the kidnapping but Mia in the other hand this time was trying to prove JJ is innocent and he wouldn't do such thing and we had this like great argument scene between Laurel and Mia, which I think worked really well. And Laurel says something like, how could you be so naive? Just because he's your boyfriend now doesn't mean like, you're my, like your mind is clouded. Something along those lines, I cannot remember. But it was a pretty like p- a strong argument. Like both sides argued pretty well, but Laurel got the dub. But Mia then tries to prove JJ's innocence, so they go to this art gallery where JJ works, and like Laurel again constructs the plan on how to like break into JJ's office. Now, due to Laurel not being like known, the security guard did not let Laurel pass. And I really like that line where Laurel's like, "Come on, if the security didn't let me pass, how how is it that he'll let you pass?" But Mia just went in, which I thought was quite funny. But after Mia broke in, she tries to hack JJ's computer to access private files. But JJ notices due to that password error. And then JJ enters the office and confronts Mia. Now Mia is now suspecting that JJ is behind these, like, kidnapping. Behind this kidnapping. 
and she's like show me what in those private files right now and we find out that it's actually JJ planning the honeymoon after Mia and him get married so JJ in this post-crisis reality does seem pretty innocent but Mia then get sorry uh, JJ gets this notification that Bianca is on like a vacation due to some like video morphed footage like edited up and stuff but we had more great argument scenes between Laurel and Mia again and Mia is just like like you guys had no right to just awake me from me this like, that's cuz like Mia like with her new post crisis life like she had a very happy life like she has like everything she could have wanted and stuff like that but now like after she got her like pre crisis memories back she remembers all the pain that was once inflicted on her as well as like she witnessed her own dad die in front of her own eyes so like it would be pretty much like it would it would be a lot to take up but this then led to the breakup scene between JJ and Mia and honestly I was pretty happy about that at this point like these two have no chemistry whatsoever I have no idea why they did it but yeah they broke up this then led to Dinah and Laurel having a talk in their like on their own and how Laurel and like how Laurel purposely reunited the team like she's done it for a purpose but then like Laurel doesn't reveal it until the end of the episode but Dinah, with her new hacking skills, finds out that Bianca's footage was edited and that it was actually that she got kidnapped. Now, Laurel then goes to grab the green arrow. This then leads to the scene where Mia looks at her father's pictures, which I liked, and starts crying due to her breakup. I'm just like, why are you crying? Just go away. But then Laurel gives her like some advice which leads to the team reuniting again, like the three of them. But this time, Mia suits up as the Green Arrow. And I probably, I've probably i said this in my trailer breakdown again, but Mia looks so good, like so badass in that Green Arrow suit. Now these three were actually like a very good team in my opinion. Like, I think they worked really well. And then they basically go, they basically track where Bianca is kidnapped and then they go and hijack the place and try to save her. And I have to say the way those three entered the place and where they like break the glass and like front flip in like into the area gave me freaking goosebumps. Now, in my opinion, the best part of this episode was the fight scenes. They were incredibly well done. Now we then found out that it was Bianca's ex that abducted her. And we find out that this person was Deathstroke, which was pretty disappointing. But then Laurel and Dinah were trying to like take the mick out of this guy. As like after Laurel and Dinah found out that the, the reason behind this was probably because of their breakup. And then Laurel just made Laurel and Dinah made fun of him for it. But then this then leads to another awesome scene again, which it was so badass just seeing these three like beat a ton of people up especially Laurel in her fighting like her fighting styles have improved now this is obviously due to the director which is James Bamford like he's well known for like his like fighting sequences and stuff but um, this this was really good as well and all three of them had like really awesome fight scenes they then go to the roof and encounter this death stroke again and they talk for a while and then this guy he like burns the place thinking the fire would kill them but little do they know, Mia had a zipline arrow in that quiver, and all four of them escape. And this is the first mission that the Green Arrow, well, second, second, you could say second, but this is the first time where Mia becomes Green Arrow, so I'll consider it the first. But this is the first mission that Green Arrow and the Canaries have done together. This then leads to Laurel, Dinah, and Mia having a talk to each other, and that they want to continue what they're doing, and if Star City goes to crap, they would be there to stop it. This then leads to a very horrible scene where Mia and JJ get back together. But then we found out what Laurel's intentions are and why she formed the team. And it's that Mia is like the like epicenter, if you want to call it. Like she's the main thing of Star City. So if Star City turns to crap, she would have been the one who would have been blamed of it like if so 
Laurel is trying to stop from Star City going to horrible. So Laurel, as I said, literally had the main role in this episode, in my opinion. And I am very interested to see what's next. But then Laurel and Dinah were considering in tra- like training more canaries, which does set up that like you know canaries the sta- canaries uh thing in the future, like in season seven flash forwards where we had that like future sequences and like they trained canaries. So this is what this is setting up. But then we have a Green Arrow statue scene where Mia and William visit, um when William gave Mia the hosen, she noticed that the tattoo that the ex-boyfriend had was the same design of the hosen which i'm very interested to see how this plays out but then this guy in the hood shows up and gives jj his previous memories back now i have no clue who this could be but he will definitely play like have a main role in the spin-off and this is the birth of the 2040 original deathstroke now overall this episode was decent like it was it was like the first half was like it was okay it was just like okay like you could watch it like you'd get like it's not as good as arrow like how like arrow would have normally been but then like the last last 15 minutes or so they were really good so i'm gonna give this episode an 8 out of 10 and my highlight character is laurel like without laurel like I I wouldn't I wouldn't even want to imagine what this episode would have been like without her. She literally carried this entire episode, and I hope Laurel gets like more main roles like this. And, like she will, cause like she's the only one that knows like what's gonna happen and things like that. And I'm very excited to see how this will play out. Now, is it just me or is it like they don't really need a spin off? Like I would have preferred if they literally made this like the back half of Arrow season eight and then like made the arrow season nine and ten with these characters like i don't really get the feel that these people should like get like a totally new spin-off like this show is like literally literally arrow but like with future characters and laurel and dinah so i think that they could have made this the back half of season eight nine and then ten but yeah whatever i'm very excited to see what is next for green arrow and the canaries Thanks for watching guys, if you guys have enjoyed the video, please give a like and subscribe. Tell me in the comment section down below what you guys think of this episode, and I will see you guys in my next video.